Yep, I did it. I bought a new table saw. Probably went a little bit overboard in the process. Now this isn't going to be just another unboxing and setting up your table saw video. But I thought I would discuss why I chose to invest heavily in this particular saw instead of buying a more budget-friendly saw. I went with the SawStop PCS Professional Cabinet Saw in the 36-inch model just because the 36-inch model comes with the improved T-Glide fence instead of a more ordinary fence. The 30-inch width would have been fine if it had come with this fence, but I think this fence is more important than saving that few inches of space down here in the basement. As long as I was buying what is essentially my dream saw for this basement workshop, I went ahead and made a few other upgrades as well. I went with the three horse motor instead of the standard 1.75 horse motor, which means we had to do a little bit of wiring in here to move a 220 circuit from where it wasn't being used over here so we could use it for the saw. I also invested in the router table option for this. Don't have the router set up for it yet, but I've got the cast iron router table. That way I could assemble the entire saw and get everything in place once and I didn't have to take the rails for the fence back off or loosen them up to switch out the table that it comes with with the router table option. Then I added the folding outfeed table, which so far has been really nice. I need some sort of an outfeed table. Probably would prefer a purpose-built solid top of drawers, things like that. But there just isn't room down here. And the ability to fold that up, put it against the saw, I think is really going to pay off in the long run if I need the space and have to move this around some. Now besides being a premium quality table saw, one of the things that makes the saw stop special is its flesh sensing technology. This has a little cartridge in it that puts some sort of an electrical charge on the blade, an electric capacitance charge, and if that is dissipated the way it would dissipate if you touched it with your finger, it triggers the mechanism, and in just a split second, it not only powers the saw off, drops the blade below the surface of the saw, and brings it to a dead halt. It's so fast that most people who accidentally trigger that mechanism don't even need to go to the doctor. They might get a little scratch on their finger, whereas without it, they might have lost a finger. So this is a nice little bit of peace in mind. Table saws can be dangerous. And having that system in place is kind of like having a car with seat belts and airbags. It's not an excuse to do anything careless, you still got to be careful. But if something bad happens because of a brief moment of inattention or something you didn't expect, that might help save the day. So I thought it was worth investing in that, but I also thought it was worth investing in a top quality saw. And all of the top quality saws are in about the same price range as what this is. This is certainly not the highest price saw out there in the price range going from contractor saws up to big industrial saws. This is kind of in the middle ground. And right now, somebody's typing a comment that says, it must be nice. And yes, it is quite nice to be able to come up with the money for something like this, but it's not a frivolous expense. It's not something I just say, ah, oh, what the heck, I'm gonna go buy a new saw. Our recent show, Handworks in Amana, Iowa, is our biggest grossing event that we've ever done. The two times we've done it, it has been a spectacular show. And originally when we decided to go this year, I thought, you know, I'm not gonna stress out over it. I'm gonna take what I have ready, make a few things special for it. 
and just relax and enjoy the show. But then I started thinking about this shop, some of the projects that we have planned and some of the things that have not been getting done around here that I really need to get done. I decided that was my opportunity to work extra hard, get more things ready to go to that show. So the two months leading up to that show, I put in some really long, hard hours making things that I thought were likely to sell. I had things that we have made for some of the videos in the blacksmith shop over the last two or three years that were just being stored. There were things that I knew I would be able to sell, but I hadn't tried to sell them yet. Axes, adzes, door hardware, hinges, things like that. And all of that stuff went to Handworks, so I had a really large volume of things that potentially could have sold. Didn't sell out by any means, but I sold enough to cover the show expenses and to cover the price of this saw. That was about it. There's no money going into the bank from that show, and it would have been really nice to put some money in the bank to carry us through the winter. But I figure if I didn't make the investment when the money was available, I might not be able to do it later, or it might have to wait till the next time a show like that came up. Additionally, some of what we have planned for this will produce some income. I'm not going to go into business as a woodworker per se, but Janet would like a loom and we can save three or four thousand dollars off of what she would pay somebody else to make the loom and put that money into this kind of equipment and the materials to make the loom. She's got a friend that would like a loom, so that's a little bit more over the cost of the materials for that loom that will also go into equipping the wood shop. There's going to be more than just a table saw by the time I'm all done here. And I may make a few extras just to be able to sell if people seem to like them. On top of that, I'd like to combine more wood and iron in my projects. I like making iron hardware, and to be able to do forged hardware and put that on a wooden chest, a cabinet, some other furniture piece, maybe make tables with iron bases, all of that kind of stuff would be a lot of fun. I think it would make really good video topics, and with any luck, there would be a customer at the end that would like to buy some of that stuff, at least the stuff that we don't use around here for ourselves. So I think this saw will help produce income both in finished pieces and provide some video topic, which produces a little bit of income here at Black Bear Forge. So I think this is going to be a good investment in the long run, even if it used up all the available cash at the time I bought it. So that's just a quick introduction to the saw. You're going to be seeing this in some upcoming videos. I've got a few projects I need to tackle right away, so there will be a little bit more content coming out of the woodshop here at Black Bear Forge. I do hope you enjoy it. Hope you like this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.